all for being here, for having a tell and all with me about your life, your stories, your trials, your tribulations. Thanks for Almost the like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving me an excuse to go buy 26 pies. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm really so grateful you're all here. I'm so grateful. Um, I'm really stoked to be telling stories about us, for us, with us. Um, so without uh, taking up too much air, I'd love to introduce yourselves, please. It's it all. <laughs> Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> oh, bless. Well, fata lo fatu topo ia matau mamalu le nei tayau. Momo la vau te si le fa fatai malu vi ingle tua awa long angle le malonga fa maongi tata utangata. Ah, talo for love fam. I'm it's it raw. Tusi pepa umanga la fa le ngamla ulu. Ah, my dad is from uh, the villages of Fungapoa in Safutu La Fai in Savai. Um, my mother, my beautiful mother, is from Lumuenga Tuai and also in Lefanga and Upolu. But even though I hail from the beautiful islands of Samoa, <laughs> I am born and bred in the place of champions, Cannons Creek. Put it on! <laughs> 502 for all day, every day. Yes! Uh, Blessa, you know, I rip that every day. Um, I'm a developer evangelist at zero. Uh, when I told my dad that for the first time, he didn't even hear developer evangelist went up the roof. <laughs> So other, uh, they call us DEs at Zero, and what we do is um, we certify all the API integration for Zero. So like um, pretty cool land get to talk to all these different CEOs and developers. But um, oh, you know what's fancy is when they start talking and like it's awkward because the CEO will tell the developer what to do. But I understand the view of the developer too because it's like that's too much you're asking, like you know. So it's understanding that and trying to keep the peace but also try and get them certified too so it's nice so i get to do that work but other than that i i, I like to to serve my community you know for me it's tautua my service to my people so um even though i've got a life in the corporate area i like to bring all my knowledge to serve my people so that's mm. just by teaching them coding or just showing them other opportunities in tech as well so that's a little bit of me because you know <laughs> club sandwiches <laughs> sections from here but so cool and i can't wait to have a talent not today yeah. bless you family when i heard the word evangelist all i heard was angel I just was like straight out, oh yeah, Angel, that's exactly what you are. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Kotisi. Um, Malolele, my name is Kotisi. Um, I'm Tongan, uh, first generation of Tongans from Tonga. Um, my mum's from a village called Vaini. My dad's from an island called Vava'u. Wow. And um, yeah, they came here in the 70s, grew up here, born in New Zealand. Um, I work as a software developer mm. at a company called Serato. Mm. So we do DJ software. Um, one of the team leads there, um, and yeah, that's kind of like the brief version of my story. I'll talk about more. Yo, um, I'm excited. I'm <laughs> excited. Me. I feel old, but uh. no. But you work at the like coolest, one of the coolest tech companies in Aotearoa. Uh, uh, but yeah, just excited to be here. Thanks for having me. No, oh, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, uh, talofa everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Colcord. Um, my mum is from Mali in Samoa in a finger um, and my dad is from uh, Papakura in New Zealand. <laughs> um, I am a staunch uh, Manirewa uh, uh, advocate and a representative, um, born and raised there, educated there, um, living there, working there, fell in love there, um, mm. and still there to this day, um, probably for the rest of my life. Um, otherwise, um, I run a, a, a tech company called Choice. Um, we are the largest small business marketplace in Aotearoa, mm. um, and we provide a platform for small businesses to um, go digital, but also to be able to sell their products and services to um, anyone and everyone across the country that's willing to support them. So, yeah, that's been my mahi for the last just over a year now. Mm. Otherwise, my background in uh, community and youth development um, used to be a, a politician a couple wow. of years ago. Mm. We'll get to that though. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a flex. Um, and I just turned uh, 25 last week and um, have yet to experience a quarter life crisis, but um, we'll get there. Should we see? Should we see? <laughs> Happy birthday.
Wow. I didn't know you were only 20. Sorry, I know I shouldn't make a big deal about this, but like, what was that? Why, how old are you? The same age as you to start. We know how we're gonna connect that age and the roots. <laughs> same ocean, same island. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, amazing. Um, well, I'm just really excited to be here and to learn a little bit more about probably the start of your journeys, honestly. like. Why, how and why, and did you ever really want to work in tech? Was that ever like something you really woke up when you were a child and you were like, I'm a bee in tech? Or is this something you kind of discovered? I don't know, who wants to kind of kick that off? Oh, or no one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll follow the process later. <laughs> um, oh, bless. So I used to be in chemistry. I was like, I was a titrating queen. I used to always do that stuff. Um, I was part of the McDermott Institute. So they're around like Massey, Vic, and um, they're all like these people that are PhD or, fellow, or fellows and stuff. So mm. I did work as a research assistant. So that was my jazz doing chemistry. And I thought I was going to go into uni doing chemistry. But um, I did this one internship, at, uh, I think it was at Vic, and they put me in the dungeon. No no windows, no, or aircon, well, you know, that's enough, but artificial, you know, Mitsubishi. But um, I was not feeling that. And I was just doing my jazz, and it just took me away from the people interaction. Like, you know, it's great that I'm solving problems here in the lab, but I don't get to, you know, talk to them, go through the process tell them it's safe, you know, all that jazz. So I think from that, um, I, I was going to the lab after that and I bumped into the computer science area. And I was, oh, it was funny, I was going, hey, and I saw all these old computers. And then at the end of the corridor, there was this plaque and it had all these uh, barangi names. And I was like, yo, good on you. <laughs> good on you. But then I had a moment where I was like, okay, then if, um, I think that was something that prompted me. I was just like, okay, if these fellas can do it, then a sister from Samoa and Cannons Creek can take up the whole block <laughs> with my first name. So ever since, uh, with, with, ever since that, that really directed me into tech. So that's how I, I started to go into that route of computer science. So your story was really because you just wanted to like piss a few people off. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, when people challenge us, stuff, I'm like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, all right. And then I'm just like, all right, let's try this. So, uh, yeah, in that chemistry th uh, vibe, it kind of pushed me to try something new. And that's how I ended up in computer science. When you saw that, pla when you saw like computer science, did you know what that meant? Nah, <laughs> because back then, because I had like a HP, old school HP, but before that, it was like the old, like, like an old school computer with the floppy disk. Yeah. So I used to play Lemmingtons on that game back in the day. That was the only, like, I was quite lucky because in my, in, back in Porirua, I was one of few that were lucky to have a computer. Yeah. So I think ever since the interaction, I kind of knew, but I didn't know it was a science. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know it was like, you know, actual like study thing where you figure out all the jazz behind it. So at that point in time, you were qualified in chemistry? No, I was still, I was still a year 12. <laughs> <laughs> Are you at university? No, I wasn't at university, but I got given side stuff to go to university while I was at college. So I was quite fortunate. And yeah, and because back at back when I grew up, heaps of people were good at singing. Mm. Heaps of people were good at, you know, playing the instrument. I was none of it. And I felt like when I grew up, I felt bad that I couldn't. Well, I heard you sing just before. You're pretty good. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> when it's not flat. <laughs> you know, it's like on and off, but I never. <laughs> but yeah, that was just pretty much how it started. It's, uh, it's you know, oh, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And I was very blessed that he blessed me with that, that um, pathway to where I am now so yeah how did it feel back then when others in your community or around you were good at more of the traditional mm. the singing like the sports the sports the athletic ones eh? and then you were over there flexing at university while everyone else was still at school <laughs> that was different because no one really understood what I did like because and you know I felt kind of left out like I couldn't like you know provide like I wanted you know I did want to go up and sing but I couldn't sing like and I wanted to play the piano I did go lessons but I wasn't passionate enough mm -hmm. so yeah it was it was hard at first but I was real thankful for my family because they kind of saw that I was quite different in that side and they just mm -hmm. kept pushing me but my dad I give it up to my old man because he saw the value of me going into that route of mm -hmm. 
so I just he he pushed me. He I fell I sent me to homework class or homework centers. <laughs> Yeah, just to make sure that I, you know, make it and do the best that I can. So. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. That's amazing. It's really, um, I was going to say, does anyone's parents actually know what they do? <laughs> <laughs> we know what we do. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we're only like, okay. <laughs> but I love that your dad was so like, uh, well, I guess enthusiastic for you. What was it that he saw about where you were trying to get to or navigate? Did he understand? <laughs> nah, yeah, I don't, nah, I don't. <laughs> love bless, that, love bless, that, love that. Bless, bless him, him. Oh, bless him. You know, <laughs> I don't think he understood, but he really saw the, the importance of education. Because mm, yeah. for them, man, even getting like, or well, back then when my brothers were at school, at school, it was called school C. Even getting that was like a gold medal. Mm. So like, for me to even get past level three and even get into like, I, my dad even framed up my UE certificate. Aww. Yeah, because I think, because he like, I don't know, like even my mum, like they always think like, you know, they don't want us to live the life that they lived. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think my parents really pushed me to just work hard on the education side and yeah. just, they just knew there were more opportunities for mm. sister. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So proving, Proving the Palangi's Palangi's wrong was really what brought you to death. Wanting your name on the plaque. Yeah. yeah. Your yes. first name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to fix oh cool story, but like no, that's the story. Yeah, that is the one. Yeah, I that's just that's, that was how it started. Yeah. So is your name on the plaque now? <laughs> <laughs> you need two plaques to make it. <laughs> oh bless. <laughs> Sorry, what about you? Um, you said you come, come from youth development and community into yeah. politician, now into tech CEO, founder. Yeah. Wizard yeah, I fell artist. into um, the tech space accidentally. Mm. Um, it was a moment during COVID. And mm. so I am not qualified in anything other than event management, mm. which um, any of my pathways doesn't have any relatability. <laughs> But I had a side hustle since 2017. Oh, wow. I just did contracting for events, um, mm -hmm. primarily for Auckland Council, mm -hmm. because I special in youth participation and engagement. Mm -hmm. I always contract for them. And um, 2020 was looking to be the year in which I finally um, turned the side, side hustle into like my full-time thing. Mm -hmm. um, I had lined up like by this time in the year, I'll have my first home deposit, oh, yeah. XYZ. XYZ um, because the side hustle was starting to do really well wow. um, and 2020 was looking to be the year and then uh, COVID hit, um, lost all my contracts within a two hours time frame, all of them that I had lined up for the entire year um, and yeah I just obviously was devastated but I for me how I accidentally fell into starting what would be New Zealand's largest Facebook group was I was like Okay, I've got this small business, my own small business that, you know, I've just lost all of these contracts. I'm seeing a pivot in this in the event space with virtual mm -hmm. events, you know, people are starting to do virtual summits, virtual conferences, mm -hmm. want a piece of that pie. I need to find clientele during this time, but I don't want to, because I'm stingy, I don't want to um, buy Facebook ads or Google ads. Mm -hmm. So how do I promote my business without essentially having to spend money? Yep. <laughs> You know, you have to do what you have to do. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, um, Facebook group. It, it just seemed like a, like a, a natural answer to me because I'm, I'm, I consider myself a bit of a digital native. Mm. So I've always considered um, Facebook groups, um, well, when done right, mm. they can be really impactful. Mm. Um, yeah, so I started a Facebook group. Mm. Yeah, and then within... Uh, Two and a half months, it grew to um, half a million people, um, becoming the largest in New Zealand. And yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, decided to that I wanted to take it to the next level, like saw potential in, okay, um, Facebook group is great, it's doing well, but I've also noticed a number of needs coming out during this time, which is, you know, small businesses are hustling to try and get online, but mm. they don't have, they've never had a digital presence before, yeah. um, mm. and um, they're rushing to adopt digital tools that they're not familiar with, so mm. how do we essentially um, enable them to get a digital presence mm. um, quickly um, and, you know, affordable? Yeah. Um, 
but also being able to work alongside the Facebook group to bring them sales as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, launched what we see today, which mm -hmm. is an e-commerce multi-vendor marketplace of the Facebook group. Um, they work hand in hand, so people can either choose to continue using their own websites and promote themselves in the group, or they can set up on our website um, and create a store, list their products, and then go back to the Facebook group and, and promote that store. Um, yeah, and since we um, launched back in end of July, um, we had over 6,000 signups, vendor signups to the website. Um, so 6,000 stores. Um, to date, I think we've sold just over 80,000 products in the last 12 months. And um, yeah, we've been able to create about $2.2 million in sales for small businesses in the last 12 months, which is crazy. Because <laughs> I'm like, where? <laughs> <laughs> it was like a real big shock to you like how well it's yeah done, like you didn't expect it yeah definitely it just, i mean i was it was like pretty shocking to even just hit half a million um members in the facebook group and then to see the success uh, the success of the website version take off as well it's just been pretty incredible milestones in the last 12 months um yeah still surreal but nothing else i'd rather be doing that's for sure my days of politics is behind me. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yep. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I fell, I guess, I guess, long story short, I fell into the tech space um, accidentally. And what's been quite, um, I remember being on the phone with my mum um, a couple months ago, being like, man, I really love the tech space. Like, mm. I've, I've, you know, I've been in community and youth development. I've been in politics. Um, I've, I've had other businesses before, but there's just something about technology that is just so fascinating. And I actually told her I could see myself in this space for a long time. Mm. And I've, yeah, it's just been incredible. I love it. And I get to learn new things every day. Like I still consider myself a newborn in, mm. in not only the startup space, but also in the technology mm. um, sector as well. Mm. So there's so much more for me to learn and be exposed to. Um, but it's just all so exciting. Yeah yeah it's, mm. it's so interesting to think about that turning point that tipping point for you where yeah like it's at all was a plaque <laughs> <laughs> an amazing plaque i'll buy you amazing one plaque. <laughs> <laughs> i'll buy you a plaque we'll, we'll get you plaques <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. Um, and then for you it was recognizing your own individual need as a small business owner mm. and recognizing the environment and knowing well there's got to be more there's got to be other people that are yeah, feeling what who are I'm in feeling. Need. yeah yep yep just seeing the needs that were coming out of this thing I had created and, and going, okay, yep, that's cool. We've addressed one thing, but there's even more needs coming out of there now. What can I, what role can I play in trying to solve that or at least minimize the, the, the pain point for them? Yeah. So. I always find that so interesting to also recognize that it's a human problem, like mm. it's a human need. And even though we work in technology, we're ultimately always trying to solve for a human need. Hard. Yeah. And like, that's what makes it, really um i don't know about accessible but some of the myths mm. sometimes people think that like tech is about the tech the tools versus re realizing well the tech is just the enabler of solving a human need mm. that we see and i love that your example is just exactly that like you you found the need first then it was oh here's a platform that can help and yeah you've just yeah. grown in your knowledge of mm. different ways that you can solve back to that same need definitely and as we grow as well you know more pain points arise for yeah. small businesses, not necessarily pain points we've created, but just pain, pain points that exist in the small business space. And, mm. um, and for me, what's been exciting is being able to now look at that with a technology lens and yeah. being like, how can we use technology to solve these pain points for small businesses? Mm. Yeah, so Amazing. exciting. So exciting. Just the beginning, guys. Woo! Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Mr. OG. <laughs> Mr. OG, Mr. Expert. Oh, why are you the OG? Yo. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know I was the OG. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my story, I guess, um, my family on my mum's side has always been into education. Mm. So, like, I think my mum's uh, father and brothers and that came from, like, being teachers and into medicine mm. and stuff like that. So, I guess... Um, education's in my blood but um, growing up uh, I went to a high school called Auckland Grammar um, I was always in the top classes going through there and like I, my strong subjects was like maths and sciences and stuff like that so it was just like natural to me um, and then when I finished high school um, 
my mum and them, they've got this idea that I, they wanted me to go into medicine. Mm. Yeah, all the way through the last few years of high school, but I wasn't really into medicine. Mm. But, uh, I love you know, how parents get ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think my uncle said something, called me Dr. Cortisi or something. She was like, oh, you, got, you want to be a doctor now? And I'm sure I didn't even want to be one, but anyway, <laughs> that was my plan after that. Um, and so when I was finishing high school, I applied for medicine and engineering. Yeah, and, and, I, and I got into both of them. But um, yeah, I, at that time, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that time, I, was, I wasn't going to give the medicine letter because I knew my parents really wanted me to be a doctor. And I was like looking and I was like, should I give this or not? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I gave it to them. I was like, okay, so I went and gave it to them. And they were so happy. But I wasn't really that happy. And so I got into medicine and um, I studied there for like five years. But the whole time I wasn't really into it. Yeah. I kept telling my sister, I don't really like this. So she kept telling me to leave, but I couldn't leave. So I tried to stay there as long as I could. And then finally, um, it got to about five years. And then one of my mates, uh, who I grew up with, he wanted to try out um, electrical electrician, I think it was, something like that, at MIT. Yeah. And he said, oh, I want you to come try it. And so I was like, yeah, I think I'll take a year off. So I decided to take a year off of med school and, and went and applied for that. But I got into, they, t- they chucked me into engineering instead. Because um, they the said, nah, yeah, because oh, he said it would be too easy. I'd get bored of it. So they chucked me in engineering. So I sort of fell in by accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got into there, started studying, learned about software along the way. Like I didn't even know what it was. Mm-hmm. And I just tried it and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then that's how I sort of got into software engineering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not really. No, I don't know if there was a lot of jobs back then because I, I didn't really know what the business was like in New Zealand. I just tried it, got in and then graduated. And then, yeah, just started working as that. Um, for the last probably, I think it was 2005 I graduated, so it's been like 16 years. Um, yeah, yeah, so it was quite hard to switch over because at that time I would have been about 23, I think, or 24 mm-hmm. when I started engineering. So for me, I was like, man, do I really want to start again, yeah. you know, that old and then I'll be almost 30 when I finish and I still haven't worked the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at you guys, I'm like, holy hell, you guys are 25, you've done this, that, and I was still She's been trying a politician to study, and you know? a chemist <laughs> as well. Like, yeah, yeah. Wow. And my parents' disappointment that I was leaving, mm. you know, med school. So, mm, so that was quite that hard. Thing. But uh, in the end, um, yeah, it's been, it was worth it. Well worth it. Mm. And now I'm like, a, um, I'm one of the team leads at Serato now. Um, I still haven't worked with many Polynesians, um, software developers. So I know we'll get to that. But yeah. Mm. So, I that, much okay. so you you didn't finish med. You no. got to the fifth year. Yeah, yeah. I had like two years left Damn. to go. Yeah. So I was, I'd been in the hospital for a little bit and then I had to finish those last couple mm. of years. But yeah, then I just stopped pretty much. Yeah. Man, that would have been like such a hard decision, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah it like, was, it was. Like, and I regretted it for a long time too. Wow. Yeah, I was like, man, why did I? I sort of regretted going there. Like I was, why did I spend five years oh, there? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, as yeah. I got older, I met a lot of good friends and stuff from there and you know, and it's just like a learning of life. So, mm, yeah. And you probably got some good skills as well, first aid skills. Oh, I don't even remember any of that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. People always say that, like, oh, we got a... <laughs> I just call the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> when I woke up again, hey, that guy started for four years. <laughs> nah, I don't remember any of that stuff. No, that was too long ago. Oh, blue. <laughs> okay, I got a question. Because when I was studying computer science, you know, we had like, did you notice what I noticed when I was at when I was studying software engineering? Where were you on the same Wi-Fi as it all? Yeah, you? like so, like when you were back in two thousand five, is it the same as it is? when I finish in 2018 where, you know, um, for example, I'll give you like programming one was a core paper, you know, 200 out of the 200, 20 were PI, second year it dropped 200 to 20, five were only PI, final year 10, one was PI, like was that the same as it was back then? Because I went to MIT, it was a lot smaller, so we had maybe 15 people in the class to 20, so it's quite smaller than uni, but even back then, yeah, it was just me and another poly guy. But we both finished though. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. But I don't think he actually worked as a software guy. Um, but yeah, there wasn't many back then. Yeah. I don't know what it was like at uni, but. How did that feel? Oh, for me, um, I don't really. Because I went to Auckland Grammar as well. And I was in those classes. I was in the only PI in those You've classes. You've been the only well. PI since day yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so to me, it's like um, I don't really think about that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I just gotcha, got like a gotcha. goal that I want to do this and be good at it. Just mm. be like yeah, 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 just focus on that. Mm. I don't really, only later when people ask me, I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't really think of that. And then I start to ask some questions and stuff, yeah. I want to open that up though, because I would say that a lot of us in different spaces and places have been navigating being the one of one. And I think maybe for you, you've, you've kind of been exposed to that 
you've had conditioning, almost like training. Yeah, yeah, pre training. Used to it. <laughs> you yeah. had like pre season, and yeah. then you got to like the main event, and you're like, I know how to deal with this. But yeah, yeah. Especially, yeah, actually, that's good because when I went to high school, because um, I've been a lot around so many like Tongans, Samoans, and Maoris, and that, then I got to that high school and I was in my class, and there was none. And I hadn't even had like Chinese people or Indians in my class before. Yeah. And it was real a real shock. Like I didn't want to be friends of people and stuff like that, which started from that young age. But then as I went through school, I guess I got used to it. And then that's why I'm used to it now when I'm in business and stuff yeah. and work. Yeah. yeah. Whereas other people might not be so used to it. Like you, you probably came into this business now and you're like, whoa, was, or even studying would have yeah. been. I was like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> Instead of me conditioning, I'll condition you. <laughs> 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 what were in those pies? I don't know. I can't really either. You just gave me the banana. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, please. Oh, please. You're going to tell us more about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah, you're right. Yeah, I'm the, I, I do feel like I'm the opposite because um, because I, um, I'm the type that when I go there and I know it doesn't feel right, I have to shake the place up so it make like you've got to. I feel like I go in there. The fale is not my fale, which is you know should be everyone's fale. So yeah, no, nah, that's, that's true. When I came into industry, it wasn't, you know, I had a, I actually noticed it when I was at uni early, so I kind of knew what I was going to expect when I hopped into tech. So, but I think for me is, it, if you want me to bring my best work, I have to bring myself to work as well. Mm. So like, for example, when I go to work, I bring an ear love lover as my table because it's hot seats at work. But like for me, I want to feel at home because I'm not with my yeah. parents. So I have an ear love lover on my table and it'll help me code. Because mm. oh. that's just me. And like, I'll play siren jams in my headphones, yeah. but it's just like <laughs> bringing my authentic self to work. Yeah. And it helps me. And one, it's, it shows the company and actually my team, you know, this it's a raw, but not just it's a raw, but it's a raw from Samoa, mm. and it's a raw who will be able to bring her home into the office, mm. so that you know I can work well, cause that's just mm. what I'm like, yeah. yeah. So I think um, I do notice it, and it's it's for me it's it's a, it gives me a lot of mummy. It makes me sad that when um, when you were at uni, it was still the same, and like even now when I left in 2018, it's still the same as well, mm. and I feel like you know. I don't want to be the type where I just mum might cry and you know let it be, but I want to change that so yeah, that you yeah. know when someone does when our when our people come into this field, they have a sense of home, mm -hmm. they have a sense of you know my brothers there will do this together kind of vibe because I felt like a lone soldier too. Like mm -hmm. yes, like I had that that feeling of yes, I've got to focus on this, but you know. You'll notice that at graduation when I when I rocked up, you know, I was the only one that took four minutes to say the full name. You know, <laughs> like, you know, I love a long graduation when it has our people that say the full name. You know, like small yeah. stuff. For me, it's it's that vibe. So that's me when I'm at work. I have to bring my true self in order to really give you, you know, my full your life. Best. Yeah, my best, huh, Del? So true. Is that how you feel when you're in where you are as well, like when you have like those conferences of small businesses, you're like, where's our, where's our brothers and sisters, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm, I consider myself a newborn in this space. So I'm, I've only been in this space for just over a year now. Um, and I immediately saw it not only in, um, like who owns businesses, but even in the investor, like who's sitting on our capital board, like at capital tables. There's a big um, problem there. Yeah, so like the problem is throughout the entire hierarchy of the ecosystem. Um, and even when I was not in tech, it was the same as well. Like when I was elected into council for Manirewa, which has one of the third largest Pacific populations in Auckland, um, I was the only Pacific person on the board um, and the youngest by at least 35 years. And so for me, it it's not just the tech space, but as we know, it's all spaces, <laughs> all spaces. But I mean, we live and breathe tech now. And unfortunately, I since coming into this space, I feel like um, it's hasn't made as much progress as other spaces yep, yep, that I've yep, been yep, in. Yep, yep. It's very much far behind. Mm -hmm. Like, um, very much yeah and it's fascinating because like it's a it's an industry that's built on acceleration 
Mm. Like it's built on forward movement, constantly pushing what's the next frontier, what's the next disruption. And yet, as we've seen from some of the statistics that have come out, we're actually getting less diverse year on year. Mm. So the NZ, uh, NZ Tech um, ICT skills report actually stated that, that the, that the waterfall effect or the funnel mm. is getting less diverse year on year. And I'm like, how? Yeah. How are we being below average and we're getting worse than that? Yeah. Like that's, that's scary to think and, and of all the different reasons why. Like what are all the different root causes, some of which are like industry work, some of it's about equity and accessibility, yeah. about getting the device at an early stage, having parents that can support, like being also, also not being streamed out of some of these um, like classes in schools because mm. the streaming is terrible that it still exists here yeah. in our education system. Absolutely. Mm. It's, that's just so racist. So incredibly racist. And then seeing how that's like having a like ripple effect all the way through into them, what we see in terms of who exists in industry. Yeah, it's exactly. crazy. Mm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I want to talk to you about bringing your authentic self to work. <laughs> because that's not a... You should come over. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's not an easy thing to do, right? No, nah, it's not. And did you, as you've navigated your career and how have you, I guess, got the confidence to do that? Did you always start out doing that? Yeah, actually, I've always, uh, from, yeah, I've always been like this. I don't know. I just have a lot of, I think I noticed that when I left home at 18, I just had a lot of, like, I'm... I've Unapologetic. Always, yeah. Oh. I'm, like, I have to be real. I'm so proud to be from Samoa. Mm. I'm so proud to be... Mm, oh, sorry. I'm so proud to be my mum and dad's daughter, you know, and... um. I'm just so proud to be from Cannons Creek. Mm. Oh, I just, oh, so sorry, fam. No, no he's great, it's okay. Yeah, mm. no, nah, I'm just real proud of where I'm from, man. Like, wherever I go, I always fight with knowing that my family and my ancestors are behind me, eh? Mm. Like, oh, like, you know, it's been a tough journey getting into tech, but I, if it wasn't for my parents' prayers at five in the morning for me, <laughs> you know, and, um, also my ancestors and knowing what they did back in Samoa, oh man, I hope I made them proud, eh? Mm. And I think just knowing that really, you know, enforces me to keep pushing harder mm. and to keep going stronger because, um, you know, I thought I had it hard, you know, mm. my family back, like all our ancestors had it real hard back in the day. So yeah, I carry that with me everywhere. And it's always, you know, there's moments where I'm always up there, I'm like, yeah, and you know, you always hear them at the back going, Ew, who's that chick? I'll be like, yeah! <laughs> Capital Y! <laughs> Exclamation mark! <laughs> so yeah, nah, like, um, yeah, I think I've just always carried it because um, it's just, um, I think it's important for our people to be proud of who they are and where they came from because it just, it makes us different, eh? It makes us stand out in the crowd in a real good way too yeah yeah and that's the value we bring to these spaces as well is, oh, no. you know we bring a different lived experience mm. um lived perspective and so mm. that enables us to be more creative mm. more innovative mm. um and you know with creativity and innovation the core of the tech space mm. you would think that there would be more mm. empathy and mm. um I guess just um, acknowledgement of allowing people to be their most Yo. authentic mm. self unapologetically to enable them to create the best work possible for that tech, yeah. right? Mm. Well, we, for sure, yeah. like you said, like the, um, the different outlook, I guess, that we bring mm. is really good for businesses. Like businesses, if you get all these different angles on stuff, if, you, if everyone looked, thinks the same, they don't do as well as if, you know, you come in and go, oh, what about this? Yeah, exactly. That, like only we would bring that sort of idea because, you know, we are who we are. Yeah. And then it just makes them better. And I think businesses see that. Like Sarai, who I work for, they definitely know that. Mm. Like they encourage people to be themselves and they accept all different cultures and that, which is really good. What was it like for you entering the workforce for the first time? Um, what was it like? Um, what, what do you mean? Like, was it hard or? Yeah. No, not really. Um, I guess for me, I don't know, for me, um, I don't really, I'm a quite a positive person, you know what I mean? So whatever I get into, yeah. I just look at the good side of it. So I didn't really have a hard time getting yeah. into work or there wasn't many, of course, whenever I see the other Polynesians, that, that's who I go to first, and, hey! <laughs> you know, because you talk the same and stuff. But if there weren't any, I still get along with whoever's there, you know what I mean? Whoever they are, I guess I've been used to that yeah. now, you know, and I see 
uh, similarities between our cultures and other cultures as well. Yeah. Especially like, you know, Chinese and Indians and the, yeah. how they into their families and stuff, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It just, I just identify with it and that just helps me to get along with whoever I'm, yeah. I'm with. Yeah. How are you um, seeing the changes maybe at Saratu now that you're a team lead? Of like other um, Māori and Pacific coming into the into the into the organisation into the industry. Yeah, it's good. Um, like even since I came in, there's another Tongan guy. I don't know if you knew it, met him. His name's Saya. He's in there. There's another Samoan guy that's come in. His name's Paul. So there's a few. It's good because, like in my industry, because we're all into music and stuff, and it's related to tech and music. Mm. The islanders and the and the Māoris are more likely to get into it. Yes. You know, the other jobs I've worked with hasn't been that appealing, I guess, to yeah. our people. Yeah. Whereas with this, you know, they're like, oh, music, DJ, yeah, let's go into that. So that's, that's a good way to attract our, our people, yeah. you know, our kind of businesses. Yeah. So it's, but it's really good. I always like to see, like, you when know, I see you guys, you know, that's just, I'm just happy to see that as well, you know? <laughs> and I mean, it's, I can't remember how, but was it on LinkedIn or something? Yeah, and I you, said, hey, can we meet up? Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I think I might've liked one of your posts or something. And then, really? yeah, I was like, oh, here's another, you oh. know. Wow, um, did you? Island, and I said, yeah, yeah. So I just went yeah. with it. I wasn't working as far at oh the time. Oh my God, please but, uh, tell her, tell, tell, take, us, take us back. <laughs> oh, I can't remember what happened, but I think um, I just saw you said something good and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, it's like seeing another <laughs> island on there. So I went, oh, like, and then message. I was like, oh, shucks. <laughs> No, no, that's our message. Yeah, no, I, I, I saw, I thought I was like, oh, that's another brother. <laughs> and I messaged him, oh, because, you know, well, for me, I was like, oh, if I, you know, if you don't ask, you won't get it, eh? Yeah, 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 that was yeah. cool. So, oh, do you want to meet up? And I was like, oh, yeah, sweet. So I just went up, met up with no, her. No, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just went and had a, um, a coffee or milkshake or something out in Green Lane. Had a little yarn. And you were looking for work then too, eh? And I think I was contracting at the time. So we were both, Yay. you know. Didn't know what was happening next, and then I, I started at Serato maybe a few months after that. And then I've just been following her on LinkedIn. Yeah, he just gave me like, good oh, advice. Yeah. Do you remember what you said to me? I remember. Not really, it was a while ago. You, you, you gave me advice because you told me like because I gave you a bit of my story, and you said to me, you know, it's important that you um you have to keep going, and you you did say something about like you know um make sure that when you that like you've got to like I th you said something about you know they won't respect you without your skill. And I've always kept it. Oh, see, you just famous, man. Famous. <laughs> but it's true, though, because they won't respect us if we don't have the skill, you know? Like, especially in software engineering, man, if you can't do one thing, I noticed that in my, in my first job, you can hear the, oh, you know, the, because, you know, it's it's all about that technical skill, you know? Mm -hmm. And once you get that on lock, um, what's it called? They'll really respect you. So ever since yeah, you yeah, said yeah. that, man, I'll be sharpening the skill, like, got my machete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, um, <laughs> if, if you're really good at it, they, they can't say, people can't say no to you. You know what I mean? And then, you know, it doesn't matter what uh, race or religion you are, if you're really good at something, businesses, are, you know, they're not that dumb. Like, if you're really good, they wouldn't be like, oh, you're, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're yeah. not going to hire you. Like, they'd be like, this guy's good, we got to have this yeah, person. Yeah. And I found that, like, you know, if you're passionate and good at something, then they always want you. Yeah. Have you had that, seen that to be true, Iti? It's so true. Because right after I saw him, I went and upskilled. And like, you'll notice that they'll be like, they'll just take you in. You could have heaps of tattoos on your face, but if you can really like deliver with the skill of coding and stuff, they'll take you in. Because it doesn't matter about what, it's just that skill that they need from you. Mm. But it's good to bring more of us that look different, act different, you know, think different too. Because, mm. you know, we don't want to, what's it called, uh, an Audi accident. Mm. <laughs> how, how did you found it? Like, I know you, t you touched on it briefly around the capital and the VC world. Mm. That is very, that's a real homogeneous group. That's just <laughs> very, mm. Mm. very misogynistic. Yes, yeah, that. very misogynist, <laughs> very toxic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> um, I mean, that's sprinkled throughout. We can kind of get to that later. Um, but how have you found that? Like showing up, especially in both, quite proud I'm a, not not I want to say I'm proudly non-technical because I'm not the worst but also don't have a technical skill so existing in the tech world you kind of got to always be validating why why are you useful like why are you useful if you can't build something hard yeah, yeah. I mean yeah I don't have a qualification in business or anything that would be considered technology mm. and what's been I guess a challenge for me coming into this space has been um constantly trying to get people to not only see me mm. <laughs> as the boss <laughs> um but to acknowledge that um i am not a one-hit wonder and i have a track record of um 
creating su- successful projects and yeah. and having businesses yeah. and um, what I did wasn't just a fluke. Um, yeah. That but there was actually strategy behind what I did, and that as it has grown, there's still strategy in what I do, um, and how I have built this Facebook group into a viable business. Um, mm-hmm. And so, coming into the space with no skill to offer other than just I guess my innovation, my creativity, and I guess my brains mm. <laughs> but also your deep 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 understanding of the need and deep understanding of community yeah. as well um which is what i've found it has been missing from not only um the ecosystem the startup ecosystem yeah. but also mm-hmm. what has been missing in business yeah. is that we have for a very long time put profit um in front um of community but actually what's the most long-term valuable investment you can make for your own business is to build a community around your business first Mm -hmm. and the profit would come as part of that Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's yeah it's definitely been a challenge the number of time i've been in a um, meetings with potential you know going to have an initial consultation with a potential contractor Mm -hmm. and they weren't they weren't talking to me they were talking to um, you know, my business partner, my yeah. male business partner. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> How have you navigated that? What do you do? What do you do? Um, nothing usually. I just sit there and listen um, and then don't con- contract them. <laughs> it's the biggest move of all. Yeah. Well. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's a tricky one, you know. You, you hope to not experience that. Um, but there is definitely a um, gender bias and a um, and a lot of ageism yes. in the space as well. Like you don't expect to see a twenty three. I was twenty three at the time I started the Facebook group. You don't expect to see a twenty four year old running a tech business. That's so interesting though, because having worked in California, it's like, well, who built all of these major tech companies and how old were they? Like in, over over in America, over in California, that would never exist mm. because it's like. Well, that's where the ideas are coming from yeah. is the sub 20 early 20s those are the those are the individuals that are like also, also like that ludicrous to come up with these big yeah, ideas because yeah. they're like uninhibited but i do find in aotearoa we are a lot more traditional and conservative in that sense where it's it, it is based on well you haven't had enough experience yeah. Of like being on Earth to, mm. have, I, but it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I'm like, trust me, you want to hear my trauma? Like, mm, maybe yeah. Think, yeah. <laughs> try me. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, one thing I just heard you say was like you were saying um, you didn't have any skills at that time, whatever. Yeah, one thing I, I guess from my experience is that, especially being in the industry for a while, is you get to see all the different skills that different people will bring. Like there's technical stuff there's sales there's the way people manage people like they're all different kind of skills and then you just named like five skills straight after that i was like hang on <laughs> so yeah it's like i think people always think maybe a degree is, is if you don't have a degree you're not skilled you know what i mean but there's lots of other stuff that you can't not everybody can do like you can do stuff that other people can't do right which which means she's, she's skilled at that and and like you know i think our people we, we tend to box stuff into this is what being skilled means, but there's so much yes, stuff, yes. you know what I mean? Running a business is a totally different thing that you can't really learn. You got to just do it, you know? I guess oh, I'm just making that up. But they don't measure that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. The Western no world thing that says, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you're an expert at running a business. You know, you just got to do it, fail, and then do another one. But, yeah. you know, it's... What is some advice that you would have for your younger self, for, I guess, even for what you already share out into your family, into the community, around encouraging or even considering more Māori and Pacific to think about tech and like honestly from from your like lived experience Sarah which is so unique in and of itself like what would you share as like advice or lessons learned mm. no pressure that the tech space actually exists yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting um I think like from my own experience I mean I only finished school like in 20 2014 so that was like yeah, a couple of years ago, but still consider myself young. Um, you are young. Sorry. <laughs> Why did you look at me? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I actually wasn't exposed to the tech space um, like that it existed until a year ago. Wow. 
up until then it had always been um like um uh sport um creative creative avenues like mm. the arts and things like yeah, that yeah, 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 music yeah. which is there's nothing wrong with those at all mm. um but yeah they're just I just was never exposed to the tech space, um, not through the curriculum, not through op um, extracurriculum activities. Um, yeah, and I definitely wish I had been a lot earlier. Um, I wonder actually where I would be if I was exposed, maybe in high school, mm. to to what exists, what what we could pursue, what the tech space actually is. Um, and I, I think that was interesting, your point earlier around, um, you know, it, us addressing human needs. We often think of technology as just like um, these real linear, it's like this and it's just that. Mm. But we don't think of it as like a thing that solves problems um, or, yeah, all of these other things like technology is social media. Technology is all of these other things that, yeah, so, yes. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, you do know. You I just dropped the wisdom bomb. You yeah, do I know. Just... Oh, advice to um, our people. Oh, well, one is, um, you know, awolefefe, like don't be scared. There's always a place for you in technology. Like it's important that they know that there are actually people before them that came into technology and are building that whale for us. Mm. And I could, you know, I could say right now, we're building that whale for everyone. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to build the foundation. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a bit of a sand at the moment, but, <laughs> um, but you know, we're building them. But by the time you come in, yeah. there should be a place for that. It's already built, you know? Yeah. Well, we would like, and it's important that you come in because we're fighting for you to come in too. So yeah. I think it's important that, you know, you know everything will be scary but if you just take that one leap to come in trust me you will be you'll be welcomed with um wise people that will help and protect them as well because that's that's something that i want is i don't want them to go through what i went through and yeah and it's just like it's not fair because some of that stuff kind of will turn them away yeah yeah and it's just like hold up why are you leaving a cup of tea you you know like they're all leaving the fale and i'm like no come back it's it's not always like that so it's just making sure that there's a place for them, but also like, you know, Totoko and Eco user style. Um, it's all about solving problems, you know, like um, that's kind of, that's what people sometimes forget is that technology is for people. Mm. And, you know, we can also help our people with technology because, you know, they always say in our community, there's those three careers, you know, be accountant, doctor, um, and lawyer, yeah, I know, aren't I? A sports person, but they don't know that we can actually create software, build solutions that are that are from the technology space to help accountants, you know, mm. to help lawyers, to help sports people, and also mm. doctors as well, because mm. you know it's all about trying to help our community too, mm. and we'll, we'll definitely solve those problems with use being in technology, because the more of us here, the more of our people's solutions being solved as yes. well. Yeah. Ooh, fire. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Are you still here? <laughs> Do you need a nap? <laughs> nah, sad, sad, sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I was going to say um, something I heard from um, Valerie Adams on um, during the Olympics, and that, and it's nothing um, special, but just same thing. I think is like you got to find something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you do. So if you want to get into tech and something related to tech. Just find something you're passionate about. Don't worry so much about the money in that. Mm. Just find something you're passionate about and that'll drive you to get the money later. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's one thing. Another thing is, um, like you were saying, like don't be afraid to fail. Mm. Like don't, don't come out of high school and think um, you got to know what you want to be when you grow up sort of thing. You know, like we always think, oh, you got to, you got to come out and go study uni and this is what you're going to be. And, you know, like a lot of people I see when they're older, they started off in something totally different to what they end up in. And you just, it's just part of life. You go here and you go there and then you end up somewhere. Well, that's exactly but, like your story, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I didn't start going in this direction. And, and a lot of people like that as well. And you learn their story and they're like, oh, I, I did this or I didn't go to uni or I did. And this is where I ended up in life. And, you know, don't expect to be a success when you come out of school. And if you don't, you're a failure, you know? Mm. Like you're, you know what you want yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I guess you probably didn't think you were going to run a business or something, when you, or maybe you did, I don't know. But you know what I mean? Like a lot of people, it just sort of happens, you know, and then that's just how your life goes. Don't, don't think you're a failure if you fail at something 
You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I want to speak to how like you would probably be one of the only or very few team leads of an engineering team, software mm. engineering team in the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 like, one of our very own like Pacific people being being the, the team lead of a, of a software engineering team like, in, across the country and mm. I guess I'd love to know like what would you love to see the future look what like um, I'd just like to see like more I, guess, I don't know why there's not more um, Maoris and PIs coming through in software development mm. um, and, and even outside of software development um, and all the stuff related to tech. I see a few now, but I don't know why there's not more representatives, you know? I wish I knew the answer, but when there are some, I just try and help them when I can, you know, especially if they want advice or they just want to know my story. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check. <laughs> um, and, and I've said it a couple of times to people that I meet, I'm like, hey man, if you, if you want some advice, contact me, but people really do. Mm. I don't know why. You know, like I'll say, oh, here's my email or whatever, like you did, which was cool. But um, I didn't even ask you to contact me, you know. But, <laughs> but I mean, people I do, I say, I say, like, I'll be like, oh, you know, like, I really... <laughs> I didn't even ask you to contact me. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I didn't ask you, but you did, you know, yeah, which was, yeah, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. And I'll tell people, hey, you know, if you need some help, but they don't normally. Yeah. Either, I don't know why, so, like, if anyone hears this and they do want some advice, just contact me, you know. They're going to see this too. They're yeah, going to yeah, see yeah. your face. And just, if you want to talk about something, yeah. I'll talk, you know what I mean? I'll never say no to people. So, so I, I just want to see more of us coming through and I'm always happy to see us come through as well. Yeah. Awesome. I'd love to talk about, like we just sort of touched on some of the experience that you wish our, the rest of our community won't have to ever experience. Yeah. And I don't know whether or not you want to give an example of that, but then also like what you'd love the industry to do, like the whole ecosystem to take a good hard look at itself and for the ecosystem to make some of those positive changes. So it is a safe fale. So we are creating like the whole pathway and, and now people stay. Because if the, if, if, the, if the four walls, if the fale is not safe, if it's not nourishing, if it's not inviting, if it's not, you know, we just won't, we won't and naturally, we won't want to stay. Yeah. Because it's too dangerous. Because yeah. mm. I, know, I know in my first job, in my very first job, um, as I think I was 20, 21, came, coming in into a mainstream organization. Into, and I grew up with like my British mum, like, like I grew up in a predominantly like Pakeha world. Mm. And so, and went to quite a few schools that were also um, like Pakeha schools. Mm. So I, I thought I'd done my pre-season training pretty hearty. I'd definitely excelled um, in terms of navigating those spaces and, and I'd have different examples of racism. But um, in my first job, this, this, um, <sighs> this um she still works there too this um I hate those ones yo <laughs> and just continue to rise oh um, I hate those ones. <laughs> this this Pakeha lady she she turned to me and she just i was like oh wow you're like you're like the you're like the ducks of the group like you're like wow and she turns and she goes oh yeah and you're our token brown girl mm. and i was just like <sighs> And I was like, I was a grad. I was, I was an innocent, like 21, 21 like, like shy, scared, mm -hmm. like never worked, had never had a job before, like in a profession, like my first yeah. ever job. And this person's just flat out in like front of our me. whole team, our whole team just gone, oh yeah, and you're our token brown girl. And didn't think anything was wrong. Mm. Didn't think that that was anything was wrong with that. And I remember it so vividly, like, and I was kneeling at the time. I was kneeling next to her, at, or we were talking about a project or something. And I stood up and I looked at her, and by this point I was taller, right? And I just, I just patted her on the head. <laughs> I don't know what was happening. I just patted her on the head and I just looked at her and I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. and then I just turned around and walked away. Like I was like so, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what that was. Yeah. But also, what was that? And am I only there because I am brown? Is that this? Is this actually what's happening right now? Like, this is the only. Like, I was so proud of myself. I was like proud to tell my mom and my family. Like, I got into this grad program, and then to just all of a sudden being cut at the knees and just being told like, nah. <laughs> the and, reason why you're here. Yeah, is you're our token actually... brown girl. Mm. It was one of the. That was like one of those experiences, and another one was too like. You know, we obviously really, really care about 
community and about like looking after people and making the world a better place and like that's just part of who we are and I remember my boss at the time <laughs> this is crazy I remember the, the my boss at the time he was um the, uh, the director or whatever and I was explaining about how passionate I am about making the world a better place and blah 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 and again just a graduate and he looks at me and he goes you know we're gonna have to knock those morals out of you right <laughs> and I was just like what like you know it you, you know it's lovely that you think like that but we're gonna have to knock those more yeah they're not good they're not useful here yeah yeah they're not we're, useful. In, a, we're in a business mm. then you being a person of like morals well, and empathy, and, With empathy and, and, morals <laughs> and you know there's all of those little examples like like recently you know even being asked to read out the diversity slide like <laughs> Oh, and I, I'm like, I've got director in my title. <laughs> like, I shouldn't be here. I should, you know, no one should. No one should ever have to be made to feel like what they're being asked to do is for is a tokenistic, performative example. Of, and that's why they're there in a meeting. Like, you know, 15, 15 slides. But what's the slide that I get asked to read out? Mm. I don't want to say it's our job to, to, to fix these people <laughs> and these systems. Um, because it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be our job. We're doing every, we're already doing a day job, plus everything else. Mm. Um, however, I do want to, for anyone who does end up watching this, who might be in those situations, or or be looking for different, either companies to trust, or or even signals of companies that are on the right direction, like like kind of going down the right path. What do you think? What do you think that they should look for? Like, what do you think industry should be doing, so that? Oh, it's crazy to say this, so that I, so that. Racism doesn't exist, so that misogy misogyny doesn't like all of all of these hurtful experiences don't happen. What are what are some signs, I guess, of a positive, or a more inclusive, or a safer workplace? Because it sounds like you've had you've found a pretty good gig at Serato. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I, <clears throat> I just want to start off by apologising. When I was mentioning the polys and Maoris in our work, I missed one important person. That's Jen. I don't She's know Jen. Yeah. Sorry, she's like the mother hen, I guess, of Serato. She keeps everything together. And sorry, Jen, I should have said your name at the start. She's one of the most important people. Someone I look up to as well at Serato. Um, and she's also Pacific. Yeah, someone. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, what was I meant to be talking about? Uh, so we were talking Advice about- for um, organizations to become more inclusive or even things to look for as like positive signs that a workplace is going to be yeah. We'll embrace um, you, I guess. Let me, I'll just talk a little bit about my my experience, I guess. Um, might be a little bit different to you guys. I don't know why, but I haven't really um, experienced sort of racism, or I guess, towards myself. It's, it might be a couple of reasons. One, I think, could be because I'm a guy. Mm. And I think, and people are a little bit scared of me, I think, when they see me in the workplace because, you know, I'm a Polynesian and they, they, they really want to, <laughs> yeah, they look at me and they assume something, you know, like they don't realize I'm a software developer. They think I'm something else. And they're like, oh, I don't want to make this guy mad, you know, and then they get to know That's me. That's a problem in and of itself, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. But I mean, so I've never really, no one's really been like that to me in the workplace. Um, and, and also, um, so what was it? that was the one, one is because I'm a guy. Um, and oh, sorry. And, and the other thing is, my sister's just getting into tech, so um, I'm really glad. Besides just Maldives and Polynesians, I want to see more women mm. in our industry as well. So to be a Maori poly and a woman must be twice as hard. Mm. But um, something I think for businesses, like when I came into the industry, and it's still the same now, there was always a shortage of um, software development people in New Zealand, mm. and so there's a lot of people we hire from overseas, mm. and that's like um, Europe. Uh, Middle East, India, China, whatever. We always look outside of Auckland, mm -hmm. um, maybe because they think there's a shortage. Um, and so I've always been with a lot of people who aren't from New Zealand anyway. Mm -hmm. And so we are all, it's, it's multi, quite multicultural mm -hmm. when I've been in there. So, you know, we're all the same sort of thing. You know, it hasn't felt like I'm an outsider. And there's, you know, um, so it's been a bit different. But I think for people in New Zealand, um, I guess they don't realize the, the skills that we have in New Zealand, especially when it comes to the Māoris and PIs. Like, and, and I think even the Māoris and PIs don't even know the skills they have. Like I've met a lot of people where I'm like, man, if that person just got into tech or something, they'd be really good. Yeah. You know, but they just, people, I guess ourselves, we just don't realise how good we are. Yeah. And for those businesses, if they can just look internally a bit harder, instead of always just being like, hey, let's send out this worldwide 
yeah. search for, <laughs> yeah. you know, when there's people right here that, that's actually looking and they're in those 200 CVs that they always get, you know, like, I don't know if that's being racist, but I guess it's just promoting New Zealand a bit more. Well, it's um, talent pipeline. It's building the pipeline versus going for like short term skills. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Not short term, but just like the easier easiest, path easiest. is to yeah. an, is inherently um, bring people up who already have the skills versus actually developing skills pipeline. And that's also, and the thing that's confusing is like this is industry sustainability. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. the more that we actually build up this pipeline, it makes the industry more sustainable. And actually then we can overcome the, I guess, the lack of representation long term yeah, versus yeah. going for like the easy, easy, faster option. And I think the industries, or the one I'm in anyway, the company I'm in, they're starting to realize that it's not all about like what someone's skills are on paper. Like if you can go overseas and these guys are like studying development when they're in primary school. And yeah. They're, and they're like, oh, this guy's got 20 years. He's been doing this stuff. And this, and you got like these 50 people from overseas with these skills. Mm -hmm. And you got us here. You only just started learning it. Yeah. But we have other skills that yeah. they don't, you can't put on paper. You know, you don't realize until you hire them. You're like, oh man, that guy had this idea. We would have never thought, you know, especially like for myself, I'm a bit unique because I, I DJed a lot when I was young mm -hmm. as a kid. So when I came into this industry, there's not a lot of developers like myself who actually understand the product from that side oh, as well, you know, because yeah, that yeah. need again. Yeah. And so now And that little I, perspective he brings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mm. when I work on something, I look at it from the customer's point of view as well. Mm. And I know how it's going to be used and stuff. And so I'm quite valuable in that sense. Whereas normal developers wouldn't have those sort of skills. So we bring another our own skills that we can apply to the jobs we work on, which I'm sure you guys do as well. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I'd love to hear from from having your past year, your newborn experience. You newborn? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what would you say? What would you challenge? What would you put out as a widow back into industry? Um, my challenge would be. Uh, oh man. <laughs> Where do you begin? How much time do we have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, I'm not too sure, eh? Like, I'm still going through a lot of hurt now, to be totally honest with you. I'm still in the middle of that journey um, and have yet to come out the other side. But I guess some learnings that I've had in my, um, from that experience and maybe some challenges um, from what I've learned so far um, would be to know that we, we see when you're performative. <laughs> we we can we see it um and you're not so slick um and we will hold you accountable and um that the the time has come where there is a um generation of um people such as ourselves coming through the industry that are ready to challenge and to shake it up and we will not we will actually not back down to that and so um i guess it's almost like a um a warning <laughs> to, to the to the to the higher to the boys club um yes. and to the gatekeepers who um have held the power for a long time that there's a shift coming and um and could you feel the earth move i could just feel the <laughs> and there is a shift coming um mm. and yeah it's 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 needed and it's long overdue and it's it is gonna happen so um i that would be my challenge to them is that we are watching um mm. and it's not just us but everyone else is watching oh, too yep um yeah and i guess um some of my learnings as well have been and i i guess probably a challenge as well is around that whole performative like we've we're tired of and exhausted of just words of saying yeah we we value Māori and PI we want to create pathways for them um and actually again the days of saying that and no action or even just performative action is like we're over it mm -hmm. and we're going to call you out for it and we will call you out publicly if needed <laughs> <laughs> she said what she said. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Let's see, what about you? Oh, bless. Um, so I think just through the years I've been, you know, working as a dev and now I'm a DE, um, I think it's important, especially for corporates, to, um, especially if you're on this whenua, Aotearoa, that we, that even if you're a global kind of company, you've got to make sure that there's space for Indigenous. Mm. So I feel like, um, my advice is, you know, you should implement an Indigenous lead with a team because some people, like, a lot of people say, oh, you know, we have diverse people that can help 
carry that. Yeah, well, we've got jobs too, you know? We've we're got op- diverse policies. Amen. <laughs> exactly. First of all, where's the compensation for us doing like Samoan language regular? Like, hello? Yeah. Like, just say because our obligation is our job first, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, you know, we our people get burnt out. So it's important mm. that we have this team that can what support and not diminish the mana of our cultures yeah. in industry. Another thing is, especially on this whenua, we should try and also create strategies that implement with the Treaty of Waitangi. Mm. You know, that treaty is the founding document of our nation and, you know, it's all about partnership. Mm. So where's that partnership in global technology um, companies? Because that's why there's not many of our people there because Mm. if people say we want this company to be something safe for you, that's great, but it's not safe for our Māori and Pasifika communities. And I think implementing that into the strategy really helps not only for the people inside, but for the customer base as well. Because oh, yeah. not a lot of people know, a lot of our marais, our communities use these technologies for our everyday mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. So you've got to make sure that, you know, because I'm saying if you don't do it, it's a business risk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you want to bring the business to me, it's a business risk. Mm-hmm. And because a lot of yeah, a lot of people say, oh, what are you trying to do? Turn this into a Māori and Pasifika company? No, no yeah. it's not that. Because I'm an eco dancer, Fino Walker. He said, he says, you know, a lot of people say this, but no, we're trying to make it the best Barangi company Ooh. for our people to come in, be ourselves, bring the best of what we can, not only for other customers, mm. but also for our communities too. So, you know, holla at a girl. Yes. <laughs> Do it now, now. <laughs> oh, well, this has just been the best morning. Like, thank you all so much for sharing the gifts of your stories, of your wisdom, of your experiences, of the hurt, mm. too, of the hurt. And just also to allow, hopefully, for a lot more of our community to feel seen, mm. feel seen in either what they're experiencing from aspirations, from adversity, from accessibility and awareness and just hopefully um, we can continue to grow we can continue to navigate this um waka together and navigate these challenges together and um build like a reimagined um technology industry overall and just heaps more of us heaps more thanks Ooh. for the 26 pies Yo. <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> <laughs>